good afternoon and welcome to CEC live lectures. I am Dr. Pavitra Bharatwaj. I teach computer science in Delhi University. So, we have uh, been discussing about a lot of topics related to computer science and in the last 3 4 lectures we are discussing computer networks. So, dear friends, I am sure you all are uh, you know liking these lectures and you all are gaining some you know insights on computer networks uh, based on this. So, basic level of these lectures would be that of you know undergraduate students pursuing courses in uh, computer science, uh, in uh, computer engineering or information technology etcetera. Because computer networks is a vital element in all you know courses related to computer science. So, therefore, this these lectures are very beneficial for a wide spectrum of audience here. So, we have been discussing you know about a lot about what are networks, what are the types of networks etcetera and in the last uh, session, uh, last two lectures we were talking a lot about how you know we have a layered architecture of protocols in case of computer networks, how two computers talk to each other and there is a layer you know a hierarchical model which is there between the two uh, you know computers who are talking to each other which will define how the communication will take place. So, we had discussed you know that in the layered protocols we, we know that the most popular protocol suit that is there is the TCP IP protocol suit which defines a large number of protocols and how you know it is basically uh, it tells you the number of protocols which are organized in different layers and these protocols are used in uh, internet communication across the world. So, when we say that you know the protocols are arranged in layers, so we mean that you know that different functions related to communication, different aspects related to communication have been divided and you know they have been created into modules and each module or each layer as we call it in the uh, protocol suit is has a, is it has its specific functionality right so and you know these are hierarchical means that uh, these layers you know the layer which is on top will take the data from the layer which is at the you know uh, at the lower end of that data. So, you know basically they, they move the data which moves across the layer it moves in a hierarchical fashion right. So, hierarchical basically will always mean that an upper level protocol will be supported by the services provided by one or more lower level protocols right. So, upper level and lower level we will we'll see the you know uh, what what do we mean by these levels and how does the protocol suit define these layers and how does it define these levels right. So, the original TCP IP protocol suit you know which was defined it had 4 software layers built upon the hardware. So, the lowest layer was known as the hardware layer and then on top of that there were 4 layers which were the basically implemented through the software. But now we are and especially you know in the latest text like you know the basic uh, structure of this uh, uh, the TCP protocol suit, this discussion, our discussion is based on the text by Forozen. So, that book and other texts also now they define and they think of the TCP IP protocol suit as a 5 layer model and not as a 4 layer you know uh, protocol suit. So, basically if we look at the layers so, in the original TCP IP protocol suits, we said that there was one hardware layer which was the lowest level layer and on top of that you had the four layers namely network and internet transport and application layer. Now, this structure is slightly changed now and in say in the book also if you look at the basic you know the most popular text also you will see that uh, the layers are now called the physical layer and the data link layer, then you have the network layer, the transport layer and the application layer. So, now the prevalent you know the norm or conventional way in which we look at the layers is what you know is the 5 layer model that is physical data link, network, transport and application layer. So, these are the 5 layers that we will be looking at. 
Right. So, basically the hardware devices or the physical transmission medium that we are going to look at is actually the 0th layer of the TCP IP protocol so according to the latest norms. Right. So, this, this uh, you know this idea should be clear that uh, when you have when you are looking at a model which has 4 layers then we look at a model which has 5 layers and later on in this lecture itself we will be looking at another model which has got 7 layers also. So, different models, different protocol suits are defined and different you know number of um, uh, modules are looked at in each of these layers. So, basically if we look at the layers in the TCP IP protocol suit, so the you know the top layers, the top 3 layers that is the application, transport and network layers right, they have delivery end to end delivery. Right. Whereas, the lower two layers that is the data link and the physical layers, they look at hop to hop delivery. So, what we are saying is that the domain of the top three layers that is application layer, transport layer and network layer, their domain is the complete internet. Whereas, the domain or the duty of the two layers that is physical and data link, it is constrained to the next link only. Right. So, to transfer the data, uh, the packet or transfer the data from one link to the other is the duty of the lower two layers. But to ensure that the packet reaches from the source to the destination and that to from one application to the other application, from the source application to the destination application is the duty of the top three layers that is the application layer, the transport layer and the network layer. So, they, they are basically you know divided in that way. So, the top three layers we say that you know the data unit which we call as the packet should not be changed by any router or link layer switch right. But in the bottom two layers the packets which are created by the host can be changed by the routers right but not by the switches right. In the last lecture we had discussed in detail about you know what is the function of routers and what are the function of switches. So, basically you know routers will have less packets coming in, but they will fragment those packets and they will send more packets than what they receive. But this functionality of the router, router basically works at the network layer. So, after the network layer only the packets, the number of packets will increase. So, therefore, you know the number of packets which are received at the network layer will be less generally and what it sends to the data link layer will be more because the routers are going to do the fragmentation of the packets, right. So, if we look at this diagram also, now in this you know we are looking at identical objects which are working, right. So, we are not putting switches, you see it is important to note that you know switches are not shown here because you know they, they, are do, they do not you know really have this kind of uh, change, they do not change the object. Right, but routers are shown because routers have the capability to change the packet. Right, so everywhere there is identical object. This we had studied earlier also when we were doing modularity in the last lecture that the pack the objects which are you know present at the corresponding layers uh, on the receiver and the sender they are identical objects. Whether it is a message or it is a datagram you know whatever it is it is the same, but switches are not shown here because switches are not you know they cannot make any change to the objects, it is only the router which can make the changes. So, therefore, this is important to understand how these layers are organized and how you know this object to object mapping takes place in case of the two protocol suits. So, logical connection at the network layer is basically between the two hosts. Right. So, therefore, we can say that only you know uh, identical objects exist between the two hops in this case because we are saying that you know a router can fragment the packets at the network layer and it can send more packets than what it received. Right. So, therefore, you know the link between two hops does not change the object. Whenever there is a link between the two hops, the, ob the uh, you know object will not change basically, but in case of router yes the fragmentation can occur. So, if you look at the individual layers right, so every layer as I have already told you every layer in the protocol suit has a well defined function right, it has got its own specific functionalities which it has to perform.
right so the lowest level layer is the physical layer which we call as the layer 1 right so this basically is responsible for carrying individual bits in a frame across the link right so if, when you look at the protocol suit we say that this is the lowest level layer the physical layer is the lowest level layer right but the communication uh, you know which happens be uh, between the two devices there is a physical connection also right so there is a hidden layer as i already told you which is known as the transmission media and in some some text we will see that this is known as layer 0 right so even the physical layer what we are calling as physical layer is actually a logical communication right the real uh, hardware layer is actually what is the physical component right so basically the physical layer it lies between the data link layer and the basic transmission medium so what is the function of the physical layer right so now we know that the transmission medium it will not carry bits right now all data communication is happening in the form of bits and the transmission medium it carries signals right whether it is electric signal or it is an optical signal depending on whatever transmission medium we are looking at whether it is a wire or it is an optical fiber or whatever medium right so basically the bits which are received in a frame from the data link layer they are changed they are transformed and sent through the transmission media this is the main function of the physical layer that it has to change the the data that is it has to change the bits and it has to then the conversion has to happen right so the logical unit between two physical layers is basically two devices is actually a bit right and there are several protocols you know which can do this kind of conversion from a bit to a signal so we are not going into the details of which all you know um, protocols are involved in this because there are numerous protocols depending upon the type of medium in which you know the type of signal into which the bit is to be converted as I already said like optical and you know uh, electrical signal etc. So basically physical layer we have already discussed physical layer is the layer which is between the data link and the transmission medium and its main purpose is to convert the bits into electrical signals. Now the next layer on top of the data link layer on top of the physical layer I am sorry is the data link layer. Now the data link layer basically see we know that the internet is actually come you know created and it is actually made up of several networks right several LAN, several VANs put together and they are all connected through the router right and in between any two uh, you know hosts or between any two uh, uh, computers or any two devices any two nodes there are several you know links which are there and there are overlapping sets of links so whenever the data has to flow with the data which we are now calling as the data gram here because it is a packet we are looking at so it can travel from one host to another host through multiple links right so how does you know it travel through the best possible link that is decided by the router. So, the router basically will decide that which is the best possible link to route the particular datagram out of the available set of links which are there between two hosts right. So, now the next link to travel is determined by the router. So, what is the role of the data link layer? Basically, it will you know the responsibility of the data link layer will be to take the datagram and move it across the link. So, the link is chosen by the router, data link layer will make sure that the packet moves on the link which has been suggested by the router. So, the link you know it can be a wired LAN with a link layer switch, it could be a wireless LAN, it could be a wired VAN, a wireless VAN. So, we can you know we can have different protocols depending upon the type of link that we are looking at. So, data link layer also will have several different different types of protocols depending upon what type of uh, link is uh, chosen by the router. So, whatever type of link is chosen accordingly the protocol will be picked up. So, it is basically you know the 
TCP/IP protocol does not define any specific protocol for the data link layer and it supports all the standard proprietary protocol right so any protocol which can take the datagram and carry it through the link suffices for the network layer so basically data link layer has got a plethora of you know proprietary and standard protocols from which you know the uh, data administrator can choose right so it basically you know it takes a datagram and it encapsulate it in a packet called a frame so every layer you know we are naming the packet or we are naming the data into a, you are, we are giving a specific name so in the data link layer the packet is now being called as a frame right and every link layer protocol will provide a different service so some link layer provides uh, complete error detection and correction some will provide only error correction so it depends upon what protocol is used so depending on that you know different services can be gained so in the uh, next you know in we'll be looking at what exactly is meant by error detection and error correction so on after the network after the data link layer we have the third layer which is the network layer now we've already seen that you know at the network layer we have the router and therefore the router is responsible for choosing the best possible route or the best possible link so network layer is also more or less you know uh, defining the same thing that is it's responsible for creating a connection between the source computer and the destination computer right so the communication at the network layer is host to host right so however there can be several routers from source to the destination the routers in the path are responsible for choosing the best route for each packet so it is you know we've already said that the lower two layers were looking at hop to hop right but you know this is looking end to end delivery so this is looking at delivery from one host to the other host from the source to the destination and therefore in the middle in the path you know from the source to the destination it will encounter multiple router and each router will give the best route to the ongoing datagram ongoing packet which is going now sometimes it may be asked that you know what is the need for a network layer so we've already discussed that you know it allows for uh, separation of task between the different layers so therefore it's it provides that modularity and you know dividing giving each layer its own specific task another important reason is that you know routers they do not need information of uh, application and transport layers so if you know we uh, routers will only work at the network layer so if you know we are using a router so it's best to use it's best to separate the function of a router from the application and transport layer so that there will be fewer protocols you know on the routers and the router will become more you know efficient in what they are doing so therefore uh, unnecessarily loading the router with protocols which are not required by it makes no sense so therefore it's always a, you know better to separate the network layer and put your uh, router in that particular layer so the network layer in the internet basically the main protocol which it uses is the internet protocol so when we are saying tcp ip so this is the ip internet protocol which will actually define the format of the packet called a datagram at the network layer so now we are calling the uh, the packet as the datagram and the ip will define the structure or the format in which the datagram is going to be sent right so it also defines the format and structure of the addresses used in this layer right so it's responsible for routing a packet from source to destination which is achieved by the router so basically we are saying that the network layer is doing three functions first it is choosing the best possible route it also defines the address of each host on the network and it also you know it defines the format of the address in which the data is to be sent or the format or the structure of the datagram in uh, you know which is to be sent so it it is going to do these three functions so therefore network layer is one of the very critical layers in the entire tcpip protocol suite because it's not just you know sending the packet through the link it is 
you know giving the format of the packet and it is also explaining the format of the address which is also commonly known as the IP address. So, that also will be discussed. So, IP basically is a connection less protocol uh, which provides no flow control, no error control and no congestion control services. Right. So, this means that if any of these services is required for an application, the application should rely on the transport layer protocol. Right. So, these three are very important services. First is the flow control service, error control and congestion control service. So, connection less protocol means that when a communication is occurring, when communication is happening between two hosts, between two devices. So, first a logical connection is established and after the connection is established, then only the communication will take place. So, this type of protocol is known as a connection oriented protocol, right, which is you know transport layer protocol like the TCP is a connection oriented protocol, we will come to that. Now, here we are saying that it is a connection less protocol means that there will be no connection which is established, there is no conduit or there is no virtual connection which is being established and data is just being sent from one host to the other host uh, without you know checking about the flow or error control or congestion control. Right. So, we look at what these three things are when we talk about connection oriented protocols. Right. So, it also you know includes unicast and multicast routing protocols. So, routing protocol basically it does not take part in routing, right. It is a responsibility of the IP, but it creates forwarding tables for routers to help them in routing process. So, routing protocol will be only you know establishing or creating a routing table which which has basically the data about the best route from one host to the other host, right. So, network layer can also have some auxiliary protocol. So, some one of the most, most important protocol as we have discussed is the IP, internet protocol. Other protocols could be the internet control message protocol which you know helps to report problems in case of uh, you know when a packet is being routed. Internet group management protocol which helps you know uh, in multitasking or multicasting when the same message is to be sent to a group of hosts. So, then this is used. The DHCP protocol which helps to get the network layer address for a host and the address resolution protocol which helps uh, IP to find the link layer address of a host or a router when its network layer address is given. So, when you have the network layer address it is you know you have the IP address from that you can trace the link layer address or the of the or the physical address of the host using the address resolution protocol. So, after the network layer we have the transport layer right. So, in the transport layer basically uh, we uh, again this is an end to end connection which the transport layer is looking at that is uh, you know the host the source host it gets the message from the application layer it encapsulates it in a transport layer packet called a segment or a user datagram according to different protocols this uh, you know data item can be have can have different names and it sends it through the logical or imaginary connection to the transport layer at the destination host right. So, transport layer protocol which is the most popular protocol is the TCP or the transmission control protocol right. So, there are other protocols also here right. So, basically uh, in this we have more than you know uh, more than one protocol which means that app each application program can use the protocol which best matches its requirement. So, different application programs can generate packets. So, depending upon what packet is being sent for example, if it is an email message or it is an uh, it is a file transfer or it is a remote login request. So, depending upon that so what service is required a different protocol can be chosen. Right. So, the first and the main protocol of the transport layer is the TCP protocol or the transmission control protocol. So, we have already discussed the concept of connection less protocol and connection oriented protocol. So, transport layer protocol especially the TCP protocol is a connection oriented protocol because it 
establishes uh, a logical connection between transport layers at the two hosts before transferring the data. So, it is an imaginary connection which is established between the two transport layers of the two hosts. Now, this creates basically it is like a you know it is like a pipeline between the two hosts through which the stream of bytes will be moving. Right. So, the TCP basically it provides three main types of services. First service is the flow control. So, flow control means that the speed at which the source is sending the data has to match the speed at which the destination is receiving the data. Right. Otherwise, you know the destination will get overwhelmed. Error control means that the segments they arrive at the destination without any error and resending if you know the any error, uh, errors have crept in and congestion control will mean that to reduce the loss of segments due to congestion in the network. So, in TCP protocol these three services are provided. So, therefore, this protocol is a more you know a high level protocol it is a more secured protocol. So, we will be continuing with other transport layer protocols in the subsequent sessions. Thank you.